All right, we're back for the next step on painting the face for this figure. Um, so last time I worked the shadows up to the, uh, the mid-tone. Um, again, I'm working with uh, the Reaper Master Series paints, kind of mixing, that, mis mixing and matching between the different uh, uh, skin sets. Um, so the mid-tone that I created was a mix 50-50 of the rosy shadow and the, uh, the bronzed shadow. You know, again, I feel like it's a little too brown, it's a little too pink, so I want to make a little more uh, in between. Um, it's still a little bit dark. Uh, again, these are what they're calling their, their skin shadow tones. Um, I, I think they're, I, I like a little deeper shadow, which is why I went darker on here. But still, I mean, it's, you know, maybe the mid-tone is a wrong word for it, but uh, that was the color I was working up to. So the next step is to start working towards the highlights. You know, I guess mid-tone is somewhere in between. Uh, so for the highlight, I'm doing a... 50-50 mix of the, the bronze highlight and the fair skin. So this is how I'm mixing match with the different sets. So we've got the bronze skin set, rosy skin, and the, uh, the, the fair skin. So starting with the 50-50 uh, bronze and rosy shadows, uh, started mixing very slowly in the uh, highlight tone, which is the 50-50 uh, fair skin and bronze highlight. And I'll probably go a little bit brighter than that with the uh, some white as well, but that'll do, uh, that'll, that'll keep most of the, uh, the highlighting in. So as I said last time, uh, ah, sorry, <laughs> that's my train of thought. Uh, anyways, so I, I, I've sketched on the, uh, the, the shadows uh, first and then uh, went from there. Uh, the primary light source is going to be coming in from uh, an angle, but slightly in front of the, the figure, as, I was kind of about. Uh, as opposed to the zenith all highlighting, which is more of a halo around the piece. Uh, it's a little more directional on the face. Uh, it looks best. So in terms of the, the highlight placement, uh, we're going to be doing the, uh, the forehead, of course, uh, top of the nose, uh, tops of the cheeks, and then uh, over the, uh, the chin, upper lip. Uh, but we'll keep it a little darker uh, down here on the, uh, the sides of the face to get more of a, a directional approach. So the, uh, as I said before, the, the shadows uh, you know, help give the, the figure some volume, some weight. Uh, but I think the highlights are really where you get your, uh, you know, help really define the, the shape. Uh, so it's definitely an important step. Now, one thing that I think a lot of people do uh, incorrectly with the highlights is they apply them over too large an area. Uh, you know, when you're going to those, those, you know, for the for the initial highlights, you can definitely go over a bigger area. But as you get to those brighter and brighter spots, those very top highlights, you really want to narrow down and just be hitting those, those top areas uh, and really refine the, uh, the placement of those. Uh, and that is what I think makes it a, a true highlight. So here we're still pretty broad. Uh, as I said, you know, we're, we're just scooched lighter than our uh, the previous mix and that uh, the mix with the, the shadow tones. So. Um, as I said, you know, probably the, the real mid-tone for the skin is a bit lighter than that. So, you know, here I'm not as concerned about going uh, overly broad with the placement. But you will see me tighten up a lot as we get into those, uh, as we get lighter and lighter. Um, so just, you know, focusing. So, so you know, we're, we're moving from the shadows to the highlight areas. Uh, and, and last time you saw, I, you know, with the shadows, I was working primarily in, in these areas. Now I'm moving to... Uh, the regions where I want to be brighter. Uh, so we've hit the top of the forehead. Uh, now come around and hit the cheeks. Uh, like I said, the cheeks are in a bit of a, a, a tricky shape. Um, you got a lot of different blends going in different directions. Um, you know, over here, we've got it going from the, you know, the side of the nose, you know, a bit darker. Uh, onto the cheek. Uh, you've got this main shadow kind of more in the, the middle of the cheek, and then you get a bit brighter down the side. 
Uh, so down here, I really don't want to go too bright. Uh, I'm going to leave it more as that, that mid-tone. Uh, so for these lighter shaders, I'm really going to be focusing mainly on the top of the cheek and then uh, around the mouth over there. And again, you know, these, these paints are diluted with water, um, so they're semi-transparent. Um, and as a result, the direction of your brush stroke is important. Uh, you kind of want to push the color to where you want it to be strongest. So you'll notice that um, you know, as I'm doing the, the cheeks there, I'm pulling the, the color away from the shadows, away from that transition region, um, towards the top of the cheek where I want it to be, to be brightest. And of course, sometimes orientation of the figure, uh, you know, what hand you're using make it a little bit tricky, but you know, you rotate the figure around as needed. Um, or just make it like right here is a little hard to go straight up and control it, so I'm doing a little bit more down than I want. Here's where I'll start really trying to bring out some of those finer, finer details, especially those lines uh, around the side of the mouth, um, and define those more with the highlights than the, the shadows. Get some lights over the chin. The lips I'm mostly ignoring for now, I'll come back in and do those uh, at a later stage. This will be a different shade than the, uh, the regular skin, but I can still kind of get the, the size of the lip. Another thing when you're painting faces and you know, really any figure, uh, a good sculpt makes it so much easier. A lot of nice companies out there. No reason to paint a bad figure if you don't have to. And this one's got a nice face, a lot of nice detail there on the sculpt. Um, it just makes it that much easier to bring out with paint. side of the nose. It's kind of got most of that. Now I'll return to the other cheek. Um, so again, sort of pulling away from that inside where the cheek hits the nose. Up towards the top of the cheek. And again, focusing more on the, the front of the face than the sides. You notice how often I'm going to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll use uh, another finger to steady myself. Gives you a little more control, especially doing things like freehand. Um, but you know, obviously, small details here. I don't want to slip. So it just helps give you a little more control. Let's get a little bit on the side of the brow here. I uh, don't need to make the neck all that light, but I still want to get a little bit more than the, the color I have. So we'll come down here a little bit. And the neck does have some, has some creases in it, so I'm doing more uh, parallel strokes. Um, you know, might some little gaps in there.
And there are little bits here that I'm not quite happy with. I'm always going to go back on tweak things as needed. Step the darker it can get, adjust the that line there. All right, next layer of uh, next mix. Add a little more of that highlight tone in. Here's a look at the, the palette. As you can see, there's the 50-50 bronze shadow, rosy shadow mix. That was the color I was just applying. And then I add a little bit more of my light shade in and just kind of gradually step up from one shade to the next. And there you can see the, you know, the gradient for the, uh, the shadow tones as well. And obviously, you know, the, the number of layers you have, you know, the more layers you have, the longer it's going to take you. But ideally, the, uh, the nicer the end result is. Uh, so a lot of it's just based on what standard you want. You know, if you're painting tabletop standard figures, you're not going to need to use nearly as many layers. Um, and it'll go a lot faster. If you're painting for display definition, you probably want to use more layers. Take a little more time. nicer end result. But the general idea I'm trying to get across is, you know, it remains the same in terms of, you know, where do you put your, your highlights, your shadows, what colors do you use, how do you work the brush, you know, whether you're doing a quicker version or more slow version that I'm doing. Those remain the same. Um, and again, I'm still still a bit dark here, so yeah, this is a a layer that's that's going to cover a larger surface. Um, and but soon um, I'm going to start really narrowing it down in terms of the uh, the placement. this transition there a little bit, go back to a darker shade and just kind of blend that line. You know, it's not easy to see on the camera, I apologize. Uh, now one area that I didn't really hit earlier was the top of the lower eyelids. Uh, it's going to be more of a, of a highlight region. And since it's right next to the eye, it's not something that I want to paint, you know, layer upon layer upon layer on, because the more I paint there, the more likely I am to screw up and accidentally get some color over the eye, which I want to avoid. Um, so I haven't really touched that much yet, but I'm about to, I think probably on the next, the next lightest shade, I'll go in and give that uh, a first pass. I might hit it one or two more times uh, with some lighter shades to give it some, some shading or some highlighting because it's more like it. If the camera exists, it'll look a little bit lighter, at least on my screen. Colors look a bit lighter than they are in reality. Uh, so I still have a, a ways to go before I'm going to be truly done with these uh, highlights. All 
you can also add some details through just the painting, even if it's not sculpted in. So you could add a, a cleft in the chin with a little dark line there and just some highlighting. You know, same thing for the nose if you wanted to. It just gives a little more character, even if they're not sculpted on. from those shadows. Trying to focus those lighter colors just on the tops of the cheeks. And the cheeks are always pain, I have to say. Do our best, and if needed, you know, can always go back and fix some blends later on. Right, just a little bit of this on the, the neck. Don't want that to get too light relative to the rest of the face. Obviously, most of the light is going to be blocked by the, uh, the, the chin. All right, let's tweak some blends a little bit and go back to that 50-50 uh, shadow tone where I just started this this phase. Just gonna smooth out a little bit of boundary there. Let's try it again. Just a little bit of adjustments. Tweaking a few edges. As needed. All right, next layer. Add a bit of water to the mix. This kind of tends to evaporate as I go, so just keep those uh, the colors nice and smooth and not too opaque. <clears throat> and so this is the point where I'm going to probably start narrowing in on those those highlight regions. So each time try to get less and less area. And how light you want to go is, is a bit up to you. As I said, I, I, when I'm done with this mix, uh, you know, I can go in and add some white and go brighter. Uh, or I can you know, have a darker skin. This is the highlights. Uh, often I just sort of see see where I am at the stage when I get there, and you know if I feel like the highlights aren't quite precise enough, uh, or I don't pop as much as I want. Uh, you know, obviously, I'll add a bit more white. Likely, I'll add some just for those really top highlights, but the amount, how much I need, uh, just depending on where the figure is at that point. Hitting the nostrils, another area with highlights, obviously. Looking across the forehead. Uh, this figure is nice because he actually has eyebrows sculpted in. It's always kind of tough on a lot of figures. There's, you, know, you paint the face and not the eyebrows, they just look so weird. So, you know, we got to go add it in, obviously. 
bit of freehanding on your figure. So sculpted in doesn't doesn't bother me too much. It's nice. It makes my job a little easier. That's something that I found. You know, when the you paint your face, it just doesn't quite look right. Something seems off. Um, add the eyebrows. You'd be surprised how many times that's that's it. It's not necessarily the, the shading. It's just the fact that there are no eyebrows. It just feels unnatural. And of course, as you go, there are areas that are going to be more lit than others. So that upper lip, uh, I usually won't go too far on. You know, obviously, it's an area of light, but it's not going to catch the most light. Not as much as you know, even the, the chin, you know, right there. You're going to get a much brighter highlight there uh, than necessarily the top of the lip. Cheeks and nose and forehead are usually where you're going to have your your brightest lights. So at a certain point, you start cutting off and focusing more on those areas than anywhere else. Now I mentioned I haven't really done the bottom of the eyelids yet. So that's gonna be my next next approach. And just ever so carefully. And if you screw up and get in the eye, you know, it happens. Best to avoid it. <laughs> it's a headache. But it happens, and you, know, you just paint over it and fix. But that's why I tend to try and do as few strokes on there as I can. Just what I absolutely need to get away with. One thing that's uh, off camera, so it's a little hard to see, but plus it's skin on skin. Uh, but often, if I have a little too much paint on the brush, um, especially like for that eyelid, I don't want to have too much on here. So I can just do a quick swipe along my thumb and just just leave a little bit left on, so I can hit that edge. Uh, you know, too much on there, and I run the risk of it getting out of my control. Especially on those fine details, I'll come down here to my thumb first, and, or my hand first. good. Just a little bit on the side here. Again, I'm trying to keep it more focused on the, the front of the face. So just a little bit on the edges. Not too much. Just the 
line just a little bit on the neck. Level of lights. Of course, the nice thing as you reduce the area smaller and smaller and smaller, each layer gets that much quicker. It's going to block it just a little bit, but not too much. So there's no there's no visor there, um, so I can still I'll still get pretty light on that forehead. Um, but of course, if the there was one way where I had more of a visor on the helmet that stuck out more, uh, you know, I might leave uh, the forehead more as a as a mid tone. You know, that's one thing I do here on the uh, the nose. Is I leave a little bit of line right between the nose and the forehead. Um, it's subtle. Um, it's you know, more of a, a mid tone than a true shadow. As I said, these you know, you, you look at this, you look at the expression of the figure. Um, if the brows were very furrowed, in a very you know mean look, or he was yelling or something, where it was more furrowed, um, I'd have more shadow in there. Um, but he's not. He's got a rather neutral expression. Uh, maybe a little bit of a, of a smile. Uh, so I don't want to have a real strong line there, but I want a little bit of a line. So I, I have some mid-tone there, and then to apply my, my highlight on the forehead, I go over it, but leave that gap, and then again apply the, the shadow on, or the, the highlight on the nose right up to the top of the nose, but still leave that gap there so that that mid-tone just gives it a bit of a break. You know, like I was trying to say, you know, the, the, the shadows give you volume, um, but the highlights help to find the shape. And that's what I'm trying to do there. You know, there's just a little subtle indentation between the nose and the brow. And I just want to bring it out with those highlights. Or, in this case, a lack thereof. For the tip of the nose, I kind of think of it as, as three spheres. Uh, the, main, the main end of the nose is one sphere, and the nostrils on the other side are, are two smaller spheres. So I kind of break that, break that up as well. Again, with highlights, just to define those those shapes, those differences. Back here, you know, I'm really just trying to focus on the tops of those cheeks. Limit those highlights just to smaller and smaller areas. Now I'm going to go again with a little bit lighter shade, and I'm focusing more on the outside of the upper eyelid than the entire, or sorry, the outside of the lower eyelid rather than the full edge. Not going quite as far down the side of the mouth this time. Let's hit that chin. And we'll do a little bit more on the upper lip, but again, starting to reduce that. Um, now, one thing you'll notice, you know, I'm painting the entire face the same, the same color mix. I haven't made any adjustments for stubble or say, you know, rosier cheeks or anything like that. Um, and that's something that we're gonna come back at the end and do with glazes. So we will give it uh, some stubble uh, and some color variation, I think is important to get your, your end result uh, to look realistic. But we don't need to do it with our mixes yet. Uh, I can just focus on a single mix for my highlights to shadows and then come back with those little variations later. 
Um, and like I said, you know, this is it's it's how much time you spend on this obviously depends upon your your application. If you're doing gaming figures, you're going to spend quite much quite much time. But those techniques, you know, like doing glazes to give a little bit of color variation to the face, it, it works on gaming stuff too. It's it's a nice little touch uh, that will just give you that little extra bit of detail to your figures uh, without a ton of extra work. So, you know, you just take what you need, simplify where you need to. You know, use what works and don't use what doesn't for you. you know, everyone's different. There's no single right way to paint your figures. This is just the way that's worked for me. Um, but a lot of people get fantastic results with different approaches. So. Use what helps and don't get locked into just copying one person. Lots of ideas out there and no one has monopoly on all of them. All right, we're getting there. Closer and closer and closer. So now, off and I'll add a little bit of white there at the end, but I'm not going to do too much on this guy. I feel like I've sort of kept the, uh, or transitioned to the highlights at a early enough stage uh, that I'm going to get to my brightest color and won't need to go too much farther. But I'll probably still add just a little bit here and there. All right. Again, get that forehead. Tip just a little bit on the nostrils now. And then get the bridge. Now I'm actually going to do uh, just some little, some real subtle touches. So you'll notice, you'll start to notice uh, as I do the now, the further highlights, um, I'm going to hit more of the upper bridge and not, not give a constant line throughout. Try and focus the highlights up there and then focus another set of highlights right there on the tip of the nose. And again, just defining that shape a little bit more, just a little extra detail in there, bringing it out with those, those lights and shadows. Focusing those cheek highlights now, right at the up parts of the cheeks, right at those corners there. Just a tiny little bit. My brush. Tiny little bit on the upper eyelid. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm trying to study my hand. You know, there's a lot of fine detail stuff, so you can't necessarily see it, but you'll notice as I come in, you know, I'll put my finger on his back and use that to help study myself. You know, maybe a little bit lower so you don't quite see it um, in every shot, but you know, just trying to give myself a little bit more bracing against the piece uh, and just help with that precision. Because honestly, that's all this is. It's just controlled application of where's that color going? Where's the highlight? It's, it's not, you know, this is layering. There's no real fancy trick here. It's just brute force. Stubbornness, maybe. I don't know. But just controlling where you're, you're applying your colors. Chin. Uh, 
not get too much lighter on that upper lip. Uh, you know, his head's cocked a little bit, so maybe I'll do a little bit more on that side than that side. Just tiny little differences. And I think this is going to be the last one before I'm at pure fair skin and bronze highlight. So we're just about to the edge of that initial mix. You know, just this shade is just ever so subtly different than that. Um, so, and then I can get a little bit brighter. I'll probably add some linen white to that. Just take it up just a scooch more. You know, don't need much. Uh, like I said, you know, if I got a little too carried away with the highlights, I might need to go brighter to help refine them. Um, so again, you know, just the edge of the nose, the tip of the nose, put in the highlight there, and a little dot on the nostrils, and I'm going to hit the top of the bridge, but not the full thing. forehead. Um, I don't want to highlight that too much because it's not pointing up. I mean, I want the nose to be a bit brighter and the cheeks to be a bit brighter than the, the forehead. So I'm probably about done with that. I'll come back in here and hit the cheeks. steps and just give a little tweak there. Just trying to fix the transitions as I go. All right, back to my lightest shade that I was just working with. in there. Just a tiny bit. Alright, now we're at that full 50-50 oh, let me get a little bit of water to that. 50-50 uh, bronze skin and, or sorry, bronze highlight and fair skin. Really placing those spot highlights now. Not much, not much application at all. Uh, so again, we're going to hit the nose, hit the tip, of the nose, come around those sides a little bit. Got some nostrils. little bit up here, top of the bridge, right where it meets the forehead. And then the tops of the cheeks.
little dot on the chin. Okay, pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to add just a touch of linen white to my, my mix, just to go a tiny bit brighter. Or one, more. one more touch with that shade that I was just using. A little more over there. And I'm going to tweak that edge, go back a few shades, you know, have all those colors still there, still mixed. And just feather out that edge a little bit. All right. Let me find where did I put the linen white? Oh, here it is. Um, so again, it, it's it's near white. It's a little bit yellow to it. Um, here's pure white versus the linen white. So you know, not not much difference, but it's just and again, you know, I could use this just as easily. There's not it's not right or wrong but I just want to give a little more yellow to it uh, with the lemon white. Alright, I find I rarely use my pure white. It lasts a long time. Lots of other colors you can pick from. Alright, so I'm taking that 50-50 mix of fair highlight and or, sorry, fair skin and bronzed highlight. And now starting to add in a little bit of linen highlight into there. Or linen white. Lots of names to remember. And then again, we're just really focusing these, these lightest points. Just the cheeks. those corners. Take a little tiny, tiny dot on the chin. And then again, I'll hit the nose. nostrils alone this time and then just a little bit top of the bridge of the nose. All right, one or two more steps and the skin will be basically finished. Or at least the <laughs> highlighting and shading of the skin will be finished. We'll still have to go in and do some of those uh, fine detail color variations. too carried away with that one. Let's see if I can get it off a bit. Well, that's when we got these other other shades can come in and just tweak the edge there. There we go. That's better. So we just really want to focus that light in the corner. And on this side, hit the nose, and maybe another dot on the chin. And right, take one more pass, and I'll be happy. This time, just the top of the nose, or sorry, front of the nose. A tiny little bit in the corner. Oh, what the hell? Let's do one more step.
something I recommend, especially as you're trying to improve, is you know, when you're trying our contrast, go to a level you're comfortable with, and then just go slightly farther. Just a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. And just kind of keep pushing. Eventually you will cross a line that you're not happy with, you've not gone too far, but until you cross the line you don't know where it is, so you just kind of keep, keep pushing until you find it. Alright, I'm going to tweak the cheek a little bit. I'm going to have all these colors still mixed. Uh, there's a little bit of section here that I'm not quite happy with. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. And as you go, you evaluate and you see you know, what does it need, what is it missing. Uh, I'm going to come back in and do a little bit more on the forehead. I think I could go a bit more light. Um, so this is that 50-50 mix of fair skin and bronzed highlight. Just a little bit up there. And then I'll go to one layer. Uh, linen white edition. I'm satisfied with that, more or less. <laughs> um, yeah, typically I'll you know have a chance to take a look at the face and see you know is there something that I missed. Is there some blend that I don't quite like? Um, you know, you come back and, and you fix stuff. Doesn't need to be a single pass and then you're done. So let me just do a, a quick zoom in or a more closer look. So we've come quite a ways from that early shadow uh, sketch that was roughed in. Uh, but we've got a much nicer definition to that face. Got those lights and shadows placed. Uh, so the next step will be a somewhat quicker one. We're going to come in and uh, take care of the lips, put a little bit of color there, and probably do the eyebrows at the same time. Uh, and eventually we need to come back and we got to add some glazes. We're going to add some red to the cheeks. Uh, we're going to modulate the color on the lips and the chin uh, to give a little sense of that 5 o'clock shadow. But that's going to be done through glazes, and glazes need to be done uh, at a later stage. Uh, so what I'll need to do first is paint the areas around the face. I need to paint the helmet. I want to paint that chain nail. Um, because if I screw up while painting that and I get a little bit of paint you know, on the cheek and i got to correct that, I can't. At this stage, it's easy to correct. Uh, once I add the glazes, the glazes are more of a, of a process, of a layering of color in a way that's hard to... You can't just fix a little dot. You know, if I get a little dot of paint here, I can mix my colors and do a quick, quick fix. Glazes, I pretty much just have to redo the entire cheek. So it's best to do the areas around that in case you screw up and then come in and do the glazes. So uh, that'll be at a little bit later stage, but I will, uh, I will be showing that as well. So uh, that'll be the, the last part 